Risa, I understand that one way of building relationships and maintaining relationships would be to form a multidisciplinary team. Could you talk about what a team like that would be, um, what the purpose of it would be, who the participants might be in relationship to working in the field of elder abuse? So there are different multidisciplinary teams um, and they, do, they have different um, reasons for being. There are elder fatality review teams. There are um, teams that come together, coalitions, to work on policy issues. And then there are um, elder abuse case coordination and review teams that really work on um, developing um, a response to an elder abuse case. And those are the teams that I work on and that the New York City Elder Abuse Center um, develops um, in New York City. So with those particular teams, um, the ones that are responding to cases of elder abuse, neglect and exploitation, um, they involve professionals from across disciplines and systems, um, and we come together. Um, some of the teams that we run meet three times a month, one of our teams meets twice a month, one of our teams meets once a month. It really just depends on you know, the availability of people in a particular community and the resources that we have um, to convene those meetings. But nonetheless, all of those teams have specific members that are at the table. Adult Protective Services um, is a key member. Um, people from Aging Services Network are key members, um, the District Attorney's Office, law enforcement, um, we have civil attorneys at the table, we have um, geriatrician, that's a physician who is a, specializes in um, the care of older adults, we have psychiatry at the table, some of our teams have um, banking institutions, one of our teams has a forensic accountant, at the table, um, so we have people who are specialists in um, guardianship and other elements of civil law. So, you know, we bring people to the table who can respond to different elements of a case. And what is the importance of meeting as a team as opposed to doing this kind of work individually? So, you know, when you're sitting alone in your office and you're and you are helping somebody um, who's been abused, neglected, or financially exploited. You know, if you're a social worker, if you're a physician, if you're an attorney, there are certain things that you're gonna know and you're gonna understand and you're gonna be able to help that person with. But there are so many other issues that are outside of your scope of work that the person really may need help with. And when you come to a team with a case and you have these remarkable professionals, experts at the table, they begin to help develop an action plan, a case plan for this individual in a way that no one professional could possibly do. Multidisciplinary teams are powerful, person-centered, interventions for elder abuse. Um, they not only respond to abuse that's already happened, um, but they also help protect the person from um, experiencing abuse again. I mean, that's really what we try to do. And when I say they're person-centered, you know, each case is so unique. Um, the di family dynamics, or you know, maybe it's not a family member who's abusing, but but that's often in play, right? You know, is is who's the abuser, and how is that person related to the older adult? Healthcare issues are at play. Some people are very healthy. Some people may not be. Um, you know, cognitive capacity is often an issue. Some people are fine, and some people may have diminished capacity. All of these issues and more, finances, safety issues, or they're all at play. Um, and so it's person-centered because we understand what's happening by listening to everyone's perspective and everyone who's touching the case. We kind of understand what's happening with that person and we develop a unique response for that person's situation.